In this podcast, I will discuss gallstones and their consequences. Gallstones are commonly detected using ultrasound, which is a cheap and widely available screening modality with a high sensitivity for gallstones. When looking at the gallbladder with ultrasound, you will try to find an echogenic focus within the gallbladder, which has posterior shadowing. In this first example, we see a large gallstone with shadowing. In the second example, we see multiple echogenic foci with posterior shadowing. CT is not the best modality for identifying gallstones. That's because your most common gallstone, cholesterol stones, are not typically seen on CT because they have the same density as the bile. Pigmented stones, on the other hand, are a calcium salt and will show up on CT. MRI has a high sensitivity for the detection of gallstones. We can detect both small gallstones within the gallbladder and larger stones within the gallbladder, and we can often characterize any complications such as acute cholecystitis, pancreatitis, or cholangitis that may result as a complication of gallstones within the cystic duct or common bile duct. If a gallstone is intermittently obstructing the cystic duct, it may result in biliary colic, but if it more permanently obstructs the cystic duct, acute cholecystitis can result. When assessing a patient for cholecystitis with ultrasound, you are looking for a few key findings. First, you want to confirm the presence of stones or sludge within the gallbladder. You then want to assess the gallbladder wall for any evidence of thickening or inflammation. The presence of fluid around the gallbladder can also be a sign of an inflamed gallbladder. Finally, the person performing the ultrasound can take the probe, place it right over top of the gallbladder, and press down on the gallbladder. If the gallbladder is incompressible and attempted compression results in local pain over the gallbladder, that is called a positive sonographic Murphy sign and has a high specificity for acute cholecystitis. In these cases, we see gallstones in the neck of the gallbladder. We can also see gallbladder wall thickening, indicating an inflamed gallbladder wall and acute cholecystitis. These patients also had positive sonographic Murphy sign, further confirming the diagnosis. Acute cholecystitis can also be diagnosed on CT or MRI. In the first example, we have an MRI image of the gallbladder. We can see small gallstones in the neck of the gallbladder. We can see that the gallbladder wall is thickened. And we can also identify inflammatory stranding next to the gallbladder. In the other example, we may not be able to see the gallstones on the CT, but we can identify the stranding adjacent to the gallbladder and gallbladder wall thickening. In both of these cases, the patient had acute cholecystitis. If the gallstone passes beyond the cystic duct into the common bile duct, it can result in obstruction of the common bile duct, which is often referred to as cholecholecystitis. When assessing a patient for cholecholecystitis, we can use a number of different modalities. When you're looking at a CT in a patient with right upper quadrant abdominal pain, if you see a common bile duct that is dilated, this could indicate cholecholecystitis. Oftentimes, the gallstone causing the obstruction will not be apparent on the CT. Ultrasound can also identify a dilated common bile duct in the setting of cholecholecystitis. Ultrasound will sometimes demonstrate the gallstone in the bile duct, but often the stone is so far down in the duct that the ultrasound will not be able to identify it. MRI is going to be one of our best modalities for evaluating for cholecholecystitis and will clearly demonstrate filling defects in the bile duct and give us high degree of confidence that cholecholecystitis is the reason for the dilation and obstruction. Once a gallstone has been identified within the bile duct, the patient can proceed to ERCP where the presence of the stone is confirmed and removed with a balloon. Cholecholecystitis can also cause ascending cholangitis or acute pancreatitis. The obstructing stone can cause superinfection or inflammation of the biliary tree 
that will often present with fever, jaundice, and right upper quadrant abdominal pain. If the obstruction of the common bile duct occurs near the ampulla vater, the pancreatic duct can also be obstructed, and that pancreatic duct obstruction can result in acute pancreatitis. In summary, gallstones are best identified using ultrasound or MRI. If you are evaluating a patient with right upper quadrant pain with CT, you may see pigmented gallstones, but cholesterol stones may not be evident. When a gallstone intermittently obstructs the cystic duct, it causes biliary colic. If it gets lodged within the cystic duct, it may cause acute cholecystitis. If it passes into the common bile duct and results in obstruction of the bile duct, you may have right upper quadrant pain. If it's associated with fever and jaundice, that's diagnostic of ascending cholangitis. If it's associated with elevated lipase, it likely means the patient has acute pancreatitis.